I, 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 guess, yes. I, I guess I did. You got a little Lovecraftian on us, man. We were worried about, like, you know, Big Bird showing up and opening the gates of hell. And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Ben Stone here at LGC Actual Switch in the bits, doing our little nightmare fuel, piloting the SS. Oh my God, it is on fire in our Linux powered studio business. Now, we do have Pedro Mateus. He is down there being Pedro. Is. He's got his red Toshiba laptop handy just in case. I thought you said Red Toshi for a second, and I got very That's what he calls it. That's his pet name. He's like, don't listen to him, Toshi. I suppose I should call it the Red Kioxia laptop nowadays. (laughs) Someone's been a naughty boy getting some spanking. Got a Red Toshi. And um, joining us from Canada and the beautiful city of Toronto, um, the lizard metal pumping man himself, Jordan Swan. I'll take I'll, I'll accept that one. All right, yeah. all right. Yeah. I'll, I'll Together with it. you, not to be left out, Shadow Realm Dynamic helping us form Cogain Voltron. Yeah. Nice and smooth. Oh, Everything yeah. catches on fire. What's up, beautiful people? we got another week of exciting things to report on, as we do, and to get into really pointless conversations and or arguments. But I want to start out with a, always a fair warning. Like last week, I'm playing around with stuff. We were talking the pre-pre-super shows and go back and listen to that if you get a chance. We're all running. Well, Jordan might I think Pedro's even got 516 running on a netbook. On, so the, good. on the netbook, yes. <laughs> well, this is what I want to kick, take the Pepsi challenge. It, it, it's kind of getting away with it. I have it running on the uh, DOS server in the studio right now, but I don't have the real-time patch set because something I noticed when I went to apply the real-time patch set to it earlier this week, it was like, hey, some of this stuff's already in there. I'm like, hmm, you know what? That sounds like a good time to test that in production. So here we are. If you hear a click and a pop, let me know so I can smash that marker button, fam. But. That's not the only thing I've been playing around with. I'm shopping around for mics. I'm trying to find like a cheap-ish, decent like ribbon microphone to play around with. Couple of reasons. One, I just want to have it in the arsenal when I do the um, interfacing Linux things. I'm like, oh, this is me talking to that. Also, I want to see because I, I bought that. I used it for a couple of shows just to get some use. And it was like I paid fifty bucks for it. The um, that SE2200 had that nice little stand, and all of this crap wasn't in my face. That was nice. So having that type of setup might be ideal. I don't know. But speaking of microphones, I replaced the voice engine in this. And it still works. Good job. (laughs) Blam! (laughs) Mission successful. (laughs) The scary thing about that is Electro Voice. I called up Electro Voice and I'm like, yo, what's the service for one of these mics? Uh, It's a dynamic mic. If you have a dynamic mic, you you have a coil that generates the energy the electrodoodles that go through the xlr cable and electro voice calls that capsule their voice engine and i wear them out but i bought this used like very used you remember the pictures of this thing when i first got it it looked yeah 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 and um no idea what it was going for and this one was getting some clickies and poppies in it and i couldn't find any schematics online whatsoever so i went into this thing blind I'm like oh well you know what? I feel like destroying a five hundred dollar microphone. Let's yeah, get into t- that. Take photos with every every screw you remove. So that you I was the- in here on this table with that camera hooked up with the arm hanging over, recording the entire time. I'm like, right. You, so you yeah, can like, where, where did this? Fun- <laughs> yeah, I could just go doing back. this, doing this. Kept <laughs> holding it up to the camera, like get a good look at this. And yeah, because there's a lot of crap packed into this thing. Um, yeah, I got it back the other the voice engine replacement. You can get it from Broadcast Supply Warehouse, hundred dollars. Put it in, put it up. Already put new foam in it. So good with that. Uh, sound cards. Uh, the list sound card. I'm done. Like, I'm not even getting to that. Stay tuned for that one. Um, OBS video. That's working. And uh, we did our Trek Mania time attack last night. If you want to come hang out with us, uh, we'll be back Tuesday with some fresh maps. We're doing that. People are getting good. You can tell when people are getting good because people get quiet. Then... <clears throat> It's getting into where we're ending up like points. We're doing points matches on Friday. So you get to like the last one. Everyone's getting around because uh, the points is 999. Evil one. It does handstands. So when everyone's like around 900, like you can just cut that tension, man. It's like, it's adorable. Then it immediately resets to everyone just talking smack. And you know, until it gets back up to that, it right. is adorable. It's, it's good for the old people like myself. French guy joins us. Yes. And uh, we, we get oh, around tracks guy. and try not to fly off. <laughs> French so. Geich. Yes. How about you, Jordan? Nothing? Nothing at all? Where did you get no, that I, snazzy t-shirt? Where, do, where does one I, buy a metal lifting lizard? 
shirts. I I don't know. Lonnie bought this one for me, okay. so I, I'll, I'll have to go ask her. I think I think you can just Google search Quadzilla. Quadzilla. There's, there, See, there, from, there, there's a there's, I, there's another one with a rabbit called Buns of Steel. So I might have. <laughs> All right, I, I might break that out. Um, yeah. I, I thought it was a Pokemon, but just like looking at it, just knowing you because you. Yeah, play the book, and but no, no, it's a uh, Gojira, right? Or it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's legally t- t- distinguishable t- from yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely. It lo- it looks like it's Godzilla, though it isn't. Yes. <laughs> how are uh, how are you and Toshi doing, Pedro? <laughs> yeah, no, you, Toshi Pedro is out Toshi. Be- for a number of reasons. I uh, one of them is okay. The like the outside actually looks okay. It's, a, it's a very shiny still. But there's a lot of cracks in the plastic and the screen, uh, like the inside bezel around the screen, is not holding together. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I was Scotch looking. Tape? I think I finally. Scotch tape. Uh, no, I want to yes. get like a broken one of these, but they're kind of like unicorns. I think I found one, but the seller has gotten weirdly quiet. So <laughs> we'll see how that goes. You know what would be impervious to sketch tape? The horse. 100%. Well, I, I mean, I mean, yeah, like you, you know what happens when you try to stick that plastic tape on something that's wet? It yeah, just, you get like, bit. You, yeah. <laughs> you. I mean, I mean, amongst other things, it's the steam. World of Warcraft, huh? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, not really, but uh, no, it, apparently people are really, really enjoying the uh, the Steam Deck. We had last week about game developers who had their hands on the uh, the deck, uh, and they were saying, yeah, it's all very good, it's all very nice, everything works really well, and this week we have, well, some um, YouTube-influencing people uh, who also have their hands on the Steam Deck, and they're saying, yeah, that that's pretty good. Uh, you see Linus there. There was also uh, Gamers Nexus and The Fox, uh, which if you go and watch uh, Eat The a Fox's dick, PC video. World. Yeah. Auto-playing the, the, video? Auto Fuck videos. you. But yeah, uh, The Fox's video is actually, he what, what, what goes into a lot say? of detail. Uh, he goes into a lot of detail, uh, uh, breaking down the things that you can do and how well the games run if you turn off a certain amount of cores in the APU. And uh, it, he had some very interesting finds, and yeah, it is. It 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 is apparently live, living up to uh, some of the hype. Not all of it, but uh, even gamers Nexus, who tend to be one of the most critical for very good reason, and they do a very good job of it. They were impressed, so okay. That that yeah. that's good to hear. <laughs> so one of the things that really got me, I was watching the um, Linus. He did the teardown, and something that he even pointed out during the live stream. That SSD. Let's let's be honest. Can we all agree? Valve made that a little more spooky than it really is because um, mm-hmm. you know Valve's like you know to Valve's credit, they're like you don't do you this. Break but it, you, you it, you, right? Yeah, you're going to do it anyway. So let me show you. That's <laughs> like twelve screws to get out the SSD. So it's going to be a very, very boring upgrade to for anyone who's like, I bought the cheap one, and it's going to be an adventure over the weekend to fix like click. I I, I I I don't know. As as metal hoisting lizard, resident metal hoisting <laughs> lizard, I I I definitely know the fear of like, okay, it's not budging. I'm going to apply a little bit more torque and snap, and yeah, so. Then, I don't know. I, no, I'll just I'll just do my R made in UAC and they'll send me another one. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so, <laughs> may, may, maybe if if, if 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 as long as you don't cover it in peanut butter. Um, yeah, the the thing the thing I was the thing I was interested in was uh, the battery life because you know b- being being a handheld, being mm-hmm. someone who enjoys playing video games on the toilet, I want to know how much you know video game I can get on the toilet. Uh, so they say between one to one point five to six hours, depending on your game, which is reasonable. I get about four or five on my Switch. And that's running at like 720p 30. So like 1280 30, that's, that's still, that's still marginally better. Um, the other, the other, the other complaint I saw was they don't vibrate as hard because they got the, the hapt- haptic rumble. Damn it, but Val, here's the I thing. wanted to race them. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, that, 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 that's what's gonna fucking end up happening, right? Like, uh, and to be honest, I don't want my four hundred dollar handheld rumbling in my sweaty ass hands, man. It's gonna go. No, fly. you want it I'm taking gonna... a nosedive off your desk. Right, like, uh, 
Uh, but, but yeah, but, if like, you yeah. ever you tried the rumble emulation with the Steam controller, you know just exactly how bad it is. So yeah, no, just turn it off. It'll save you battery life. <laughs> yeah. And 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 you and you know what? It's 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 a good sign. We're 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 seeing we're seeing games running on it. Uh we're gonna need to see more easy anti sheet support to actually play some games with your friends on it, but we'll get to that in a little but, bit. Yes. Uh, one thing that I saw that Steven covered. Now this is like a little comparison that I can do that I even installed a, they were talking about Devil May Cry five. You know. Mm-hmm. And you know, nonstop comeback action and all that. So never dropping under sixty frames per second at, you know, effectively let's just call it seven twenty P. And, sure. um, you know, Gamers Nexus, they clocked it at 64 frames uh, with ray tracing disabled. I didn't even know it had ray tracing. 40 uh, per second docked to a full 1080p display. And Linus reported that it sometimes jumped to as much as 90 frames per second, which I was curious because, you know, naturally I'm like, well, how does that stack up against what is now a much coveted card in this bullshit moon future we're living in, a 2060? <laughs> um <laughs> And I cut it down to like 720p in a window and I just maxed everything to like 200 and something frames per second. I'm like, all right, never mind, never mind. I just, well, yeah, I, I, I mean, with, yeah. with, yeah, with, with your <laughs> yeah. Threadripper and your dedicated <laughs> GPU, no, it outperforms the handhelds. I, well, ah. I wanted to see what the Delta was. Right. Like, yeah. yeah. Just, just kind of get a feel for it. Cause I was impressed, you know, 720p 60, that at that screen size, that's going to be good enough for government work. Oh yeah, and you, you, you have FSR built into the uh, the OS, so you go. can just yeah. yeah, you can just FSR literally everything, so it's going to look even better despite being lower that uh, being rendered at a you, lower resolution. You know, it's going to make it look even better though. No, a custom kernel. Oh man, oh, okay. man. you can't yes. do that. You can't. No, 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 not not if you want to play some fork knives. Yeah. So our 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 buddy boy Tim Sweeney, Timmy boy, Sweeney's pep and shed pepperoni sticks. Uh, he's back, and uh, he 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 has he has some words. Uh, people were asking on Twitter. Uh, yo, now that Easy Anti Cheat uh, has uh, Proton and Wine compatibility, uh, is there gonna are we gonna see some uh, EAC uh, for uh, Fortnite? And uh, Tim goes and says Fortnite. No, uh, and the exact quote with regard to anti cheat on the Linux platform supporting custom kernels and the threat model of a game of Fortnite size. Yes, that's exactly right. Ah, oh, yes, the, the those custom kernel using brigands changing uh, their their their, their HPET timing and, and and their preemption model. Oh, those those, those crafty bastards are stripping out like the unnecessary ham radio drivers that you don't fucking need for a desktop system and changing your schedules will provide maximal cheat. Okay, so here here's here's my tinfoil hat theory on why this actually is from an automation perspective it is substantially easier to set up a botnet with linux than it is with windows Mm -hmm. and he doesn't want he doesn't want uh any sort of like easily automated uh bot farm getting into his precious cash cow like because this this excuse makes absolutely zero sense there um, unless you are like and and i fair to be to their credit i would not put it past some of the cheating manufacturer cheating manufacturers to actually do that but without like very specific (laughs) driver code in these custom kernels which you could probably check for anyways like i don't see how that would even impact things the motto of the kernel is we don't impact user space that's their entire mm-hmm. that's like their rule mm-hmm. zero. So I don't I don't see how this is even even anything. Do you? No, I, maybe, uh, maybe, uh, maybe uh, I'm just I, an, uh, a Luddite idiot. <laughs> <laughs> no, what I was wondering was uh, what uh, custom Windows kernel are those people making videos showing themselves cheating in Fortnite in Windows? Uh, they've already clearly managed to circumvent and or exploit EAC. So what? custom windows kernel are those people running Tim. okay all right yeah My they're, they're running this. the nt4 both kernel. of you that's both what. of you are wrong this this is a man <laughs> who has absolutely <laughs> zero fucking faith in the product that he sells yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, oh, he knows shit. full well that eac is bs <laughs> this is this is God. My interpretation, I, I'm reading the moon tea leaves uh, this is like this shit barely sticks together on windows son i mean <laughs> The one thing that EAC However, does is stop okay. people from Hear playing out, the though. game Hear in Proton. Out. That's it. Maybe it's a small <laughs> mixture of that with another large mixture of just Tim Sweeney being motherfucking Tim Sweeney. Yeah. He's, he's got to stick it to Valve somehow. I, something. 
I yeah. mean, it's it, it, it's a great the Steam Deck is a great move for PC gaming. It's going to open everything up. We're just not going to put our fucking games on it because well, you know, you know, to like because open, we don't like Valve. Open gaming <laughs> platform. Really, stay tuned about this. You know, that can run any operating system, and you know, Epic's like we're all for the game developers and all that. Yeah, fuck that. No. Mm-mm. <laughs> no, no, no. The open platform, the actual, truly open platform. No. Uh, I got to say, Sweetie's the only person in the gaming industry that I genuinely believe goes, yeah, at some point, <laughs> like every day. <laughs> he he pull, pulls off his, like, or skin, his skin right. and he's like, Skeletor? Yeah. Right. <laughs> You know, you I still remember his whole spiel about, oh, the PS5 and the uh, storage technology is going to be revolutionary. Yeah, where are those uh, NVMe RAID 0 SSDs now, Tim? I didn't know Tim made it. Um Raid Zero uh, SSDs. I, 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 I want some Raid Zero no, SSDs. No, he was for... talking about the uh, PS5 SSD uh, being able to attain, what was it? 12 uh, gigabytes I per second. I remember he did that. Then Linus like called him out on it. And then Linus had to do an apology yep. video for it because <laughs> ah, yeah, the, the, yeah. The, the John Cena special. He had to apologize. <laughs> he, I'm still like, waiting for games that actually use that technology. Well, to be fair, no one can buy a PS five. So that's yeah, right. Yeah. So <laughs> well, you, you can buy a PS four, but oh, 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 speaking of open gaming platforms, Chimera OS, yes. formerly known as Gamorus, they changed their name from one cryptid to another, but they have a new release out. Uh, release number 30 is out. It comes with Linux 5.16.5, latest Mesa, latest NVIDIA drivers, Chimera 13.0, the new Steam most composable compositor plus. And really what this actually means for you is uh, they're adding a compatibility system for uh, non-Steam game sources. And uh, if you got one of those One X players, I have to look that up because I didn't know what the hell it was. It's a uh, not Steam Deck. Uh, if you want to run this on your not Steam Deck, you have some better support for the uh, controller. Um, it'll auto detect the resolution to 1200 by 800 and yeah, do the screen orientation stuff. So that's, that's nice. At least if you want to make your own steam deck without the thing we're going to talk about later. Well, I mean, come on, let's, let's think about this. Um, I think we're going to see a lot more like custom spins for decks. We've covered that. Mm-hmm, We've for covered sure. that. How many months or is it going to be on release day that we see the Microsoft deck spin? It's like, no optimize for deck. <laughs> No, I, I think I think we're gonna see the X Surface, the Xbox Surface combo. I don't know. Z- Zune three, so Zuneening. A, a couple of things about this, though. I mean, I, there's gonna it's brilliant. Have different, di- you know, you're, you're gonna have what Valve has. It's like this is Steam. Let's go play with that. And you're like, oh, I want to play with this and this and this. Five sixteen options are good. You know, people call it fragmentation. Mm-hmm. I like to call it what it is: evolution. You know, this is how shit gets Choice. sorted out. But choice. <laughs> the big, the big one in this. Uh, to me, it was like, damn it, what segment are we going to start putting this in? Adding the compatibility rating systems for FlatHub, Epic Game Store, and GOG. So mm. immediately out of the box, you get a bunch of fun options to play with, which like, that is good. That kept, this, Valve, this is something that should be, you know, outside of like the Steam Deck compatible. It's like, how does it work on ProtonDB? Like, let me know without having to go to ProtonDB. I love ProtonDB, but it's like an extra step. You got, you got checkbox, uh, man. You got you to be happy with checkboxes. I have um, Gabarus Chimeras uh, running on the Steam Box uh, 360. And the the thing that I really wanted to try was Steam Buddy. It's their uh, web front end because it just spawns an Nginx session. And if you hit the IP address, it gives you a very nice front end. And the first thing you see like on the Steam Box, it actually puts a like full screen thing. Type in this password and it gives you a temporary password. So that you can do things from the web front end, like set up Mango HUD, set up uh, the emulators, set up launchers for games inside those emulators. You could do all of that via the web front end. That's freaking genius. At the moment that like the Steam Deck comes out uh, and Valve actually makes the big picture mode look like the current Steam Deck uh, UI... Chimeros is going to be a very, very good option. It is. Big, and, big deck mode. Here, here's like one of the things I want to say, though, man. Uh, I see Linux Nero in chat. Watch this live. Makes point. It says, watch Valve start a monthly service in Game Pass, to which I will respond with fucking yes. Please, Valve, do that. And yeah. I will bring <laughs> money upon you for that option because that's something I've been asking for for years. Um, it would be brilliant. I could even play something that's clearly not inspired. 
Was inspired the right word? By uh, Star Fox. <laughs> I, I, I mean, like, nothing is Do original, well. period. Yeah, uh, but, but, you know, it's, it's good to wear your influences on your sleeve. X, Zodiac. So we actually talked about this uh, for Steam New Game segment. Uh, back in episode 477, uh, Godot was doing a little uh, news post and expose about uh, the Godot games that were uh, being on display during the Indie Fest. X, Zodiac is one of them. They got themselves a... Uh, they have themselves a demo that you can download, uh, and it's coming early 2022. Uh, it's almost the end of early 2022, so hopefully <laughs> soon. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, this is a one-person deal, and uh, the, the, my, my serious question, uh, are either of you old enough to remember playing um, Far Stocks way back when it was originally released on the... I played Snows? it on the N64. Mm. That, was, that was my Star Fox. Yeah, the N64 version at a friend's house because I didn't have one. <laughs> we, uh, I had a friend with a copy of it, and it was quite amazing. I mean, it was revolutionary at the time. I don't even know if um, the Mega Drive had the super effects, the virtual racing out at the time. I think um, Star Fox was the first run. That's how you remember it. Going back and like looking at it makes me wonder is like, is X Zodiac going to have an authentic, you know, to really make you feel those 12 frames per second that you were getting in that thing? Because I didn't realize at the time as a child, like it was 3D. It was amazing. It was slow, but mm-hmm. I'd be down with this. I'd be down, played around with this. Uh, no pricing information, but as Jordan pointed out, there is a demo. So yeah, like what do we need to run this? Uh, any distribution challenge accepted. Yeah, it's, 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 it's done in Godot, so it's not going to be too taxing on your system. Uh, yeah, so you just need OpenGL 2.1, and you're good to go. Really good to see some 3D-inspired uh, stuff come from Godot. Yes. Yeah. I, I mean, they're going, they're going through the evolution of it, right? Like, you got to go, like, Super Nintendo 3D, then they'll get they'll hit, like, PlayStation 3D, PS2 3D, and then maybe, if we're lucky, we'll get, like, 360 3D, PS3 3D. I think that's what we can hope from Godot. All right. Pedro, don't get my hopes up. <laughs> I didn't do it. They did it because I opened up Steam and the first thing I saw on the new library was a uh, new uh, Pocket Cars updates. I, okay, what do we got? Oh, uh, multiplayer updates of all things. Cool. <laughs> Version not 82 uh, has some very minor improvements, uh, but a few fixes. And the big one is the ability to join an ongoing multiplayer game instead of just um, lobbies. Because if you tried to join a game in progress, you couldn't do it. You, people would have to be in the lobby for you to be able to join. So they created spectator mode originally, but now you can just join um, at whatever um, point, which is good. I wish more games good. would do that. Yeah, that's 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 yeah. a nice feature. Like, <laughs> like Left 4 Dead doing that was like super easy. You don't have yeah, to- Yeah, you just kind of pop in and do that thing, man. And like, yeah. this is a game that uh, Pedro and I have just been patiently just forgetting about because- Yes. We're the only two people that have ever played it, unfortunately, <laughs> which kind of led me to wonder, like, how did they discover this bug? Because I've never seen it in a online <laughs> server. Apparently, they have a Discord server where they uh, organize people together to do some races. Oh, so not too different from Revolt in 2022 as well. But Revolt came out in 1998. So... It, this game has it, <laughs> the reason we're, we're a little angry about it is because this is dripping with promise this game yeah it looks really good the physics are really nice and you can set just exactly the level of assists that you want Mm -hmm. i i want this game to have so much more but it it doesn't it needs a player base they didn't really add much you know i think i don't know if it was necessarily this what this game uh, desperately needs one and like the next update bots is even when Pedro and myself playing multiplayer mods, yes, which Pedro and I are fine, like just racing against each other, but it's boring when it's just two people on a big ass map. You want other cars to like bounce around and weave in and out of two. You got to get out of early access at some point, and that day you need to put this thing on fire. So I'm talking like five bucks, five quid, <laughs> and uh, or like 75 Canadian, whatever it is today. And uh, I got to double check <laughs> <laughs> it to get that player base to jump in. I mean, sometimes that, that's a gamble, you know, because uh, what was the last uh, developer I saw? Oh, Army Men, the game. They Mutants. put it on for like a buck or something like that. And it, we jumped in and we started playing. Unfortunately, it was a technical shit show, but it was still a good idea. And yeah, I, I want this to succeed at some point. But I, I think maybe maybe for us, we're still a little... We got a little distant itis 
<laughs> you, you, you got a little bit of Project Cars trauma. <laughs> Well, no, no, like that said it and forget a distance is like fucking come out, man. It's we're on year seven. Yeah. Like <laughs> when you when your updates are Just like we're, release we're, we're tweaking the, oh, uh, the axle mode. physics on the left axle. I'm like, no, come on, come on, let it let, 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 let's go. Let's put this out. So um oh speaking of that, I bought the uh, distant soundtrack this week. Because of reasons. Okay. It's a good soundtrack. And it's also like two hours of background music for Track Mania Night. Mm-hmm. Yes. That'll do it. Uh Star Wars. Uh, so say we all. Corbin Dallas. Dude. Spe- spe- <laughs> speaking, speaking of fucking Fifth Element, man. It begins. Looks like Star Wars yeah. Squadron has now has now EAC support for Linux. And uh, time to reinstall. Yeah, I'd have to go out and buy it. And I don't know about VR, <laughs> but uh, let's take a look. There it is. Data. Easy anti-cheat. Uh, uh, X80, yeah, X64.so. Patch. Scripts. It's a thing and too much confusion you know i wouldn't looked at it because I, I think i'd heard of the game before this is fly around shooty pew pew squadrons master it's yeah, got the- recent mixed reviews it's basically auto aim arcade console fly around shooter yeah people wanted it to be like proper multiplayer rogue squadron and it wasn't <laughs> no it was, it was it was still pretty fun though like i i have it on ps4 and i think it's pretty dope um yeah, uh, but uh, like uh, like uh, Ben was saying, uh, they added the uh, Easy Cheat uh, wine binary, uh, wine library to the repository, but they haven't enabled it on the back end, so no luck just yet. Oh man, yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing: we were talking you know, about this in the pre-pre version. Uh, what I'm worried about is not not even the Easy Anti Cheat because I, I got a feels that money's been put into that development as that's going to be kind of a smooth thing. It's either going to work. It's not, there's not going to be any half work solutions. It kind of works. There's not going to be any, we need to start 30 minutes before the show to make sure our Bethesda bullshit launches and links up the accounts. Yes. What I'm talking about is I'm a little afraid of the EA and origin steam account linking mini game. That's going to be included in these titles. Not looking forward to that. Now, no one wants to be first Pedro, but I think we're, what we're seeing here is, is Jordan saying, Hey, it's EA. Yes. But it's that domino effect. That's going to be powered by greed. Yeah, it is. And yes, the, uh, the deck will be going out at the end of this month. So that'll be an interesting arms race to see. But yeah, if we were putting down money on which of the big publishers were going to be the first to introduce EAC support for their games for Proton, I would not have said EA. Not I, any, yeah. no. <laughs> we, we got we got we got a little bit of precedent. EA, as as we've established, they're 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 like the prime evil greedy corporation. They've been the OG for a while. They like things that cost them zero and require minimal effort on their part, which is why they handed Red Alert and uh, Command and Conquer over to the community because they're like, yeah, sure, maintain this shit. I don't, you, you still got to buy the game, right? Not get, you're not yeah. pirating the game files. You're good. Yeah. So yeah, my he, guess was going to be like uh, Bandai Namco because there's Elden Ring coming out later on, and that will be Namkai using Bando, easy anti cheat. Namkai Bando, yeah, Namkai Namkai Bando. Bando yes. <laughs> it was a show title at one point, so it can't be anymore. Uh, we but still call yeah, it, it that. is. <laughs> the like that was going to be my guess because you know From Software had already worked with Valve with Dark Souls Three and. Steam input was built directly into the PC version of the game. So, okay, if there's going to be a first, probably Elden Ring. I was wrong. <laughs> I'm going to sit back, relax, it's and just watch this play squadrons. out and uh, do the same that a lot of people listen. Listen, Turtle Rock, you, you get the, the three people that want to actually play Back for Blood left on the planet. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Just hook, hook, take hook us up a little bit. Download the library and put it in the like, depot. We are not going to be happy about it. it. We were going to bitch and moan about paying 50 bucks, but we'll do but it. But you're going to, you're, yeah. you're going to get the 150 bucks, yeah. right? Like, I yeah. mean, that four yeah. pack's coming maybe. Uh, so yeah. Also EA's done a thing. That's nice of you. Let's go, go, go blow shit up in space. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I think that's going to do it for us. Coming up next. You wouldn't download a steam deck, would you? Well, now you can. Where's the beef? You'll have to bear with us. Uh, We have a bit of a technical problem, and the only way we can solve it is by telling you how you can support this particular brand of insanity that happens every Saturday night. Now I want a Bluetooth cowbell. (laughs) 
uh, needs, you can. needs more Bluetooth. <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 we have a technical emergency and the only way to fix it is, is to send us a uh, cashier's check for two thousand dollars now head on over doctor, to doctor doctor give me the news I, okay now here, here's your challenge try to come up with something remotely useful for a bluetooth enabled count bell <laughs> it, it, it's just, got little it receiver <laughs> no 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 you, you hit it and then it like sends it to audacity or something so if you're like doing your blue oyster cult cover band remotely you can do it <laughs> Oh, so it's like a MIDI controller? Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's like with a cowbell, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, okay. So you hit electric it and it doesn't actually make a sound. It just sends the sound via Bluetooth. Okay. Yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, so so if you want to buy electric cowbells for the lot of us, head on over to patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. Uh, select the cowbell option. No, uh, but you can select some other <laughs> cool options. You can get access to our Discord channel, which you can also get by uh, subbing to us on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Linux Gamecast, which you yes. should be watching right here, right now. No, I'm um, watching it through this very convoluted setup that only sometimes gets ads because... Yeah, it's... <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, sometimes. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, you, you get other stuff like uh, access to the pre free Super Shows and that extra hour of podcast. What are we talking about this week? I kind of, it kind of blew by. Man, I we kind of rolled I, in. We went a bit more in depth with the Best Buy bullshit with the 30 series. Yeah. We talked about the new egg thing and uh, then we covered a lot of other stuff in between yeah. that. But we were just the game we're going to be throwing yeah. chairs at. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> l- 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 less of a unified theme this time around, but still, still some good stuff if you want to check that out. Not if as you're, uh, geography ex- heavy. No, no, if you're an executive <laughs> producer, you get the live video feed of that as well. So you mm-hmm. can watch us, you know, slap ourselves live video, into shape. Live audio, we do, it's effectively an extra hour of our bullshit each and every week. Yep. If you're into that and you need that in the background, and uh, that's a produced show along with a live and uncut series. It's just the middle. You know, this show, what usually clocks in about an hour, but we're usually here like three and a half to four hours. I have a fully produced version of that podcast format. So if you need background noise, that's Linux related, Linux adjacent with Bluetooth. Cowbells, we got you covered. G- gotta get it more cowbell. The other cool thing you can do, that's more of a recent thing with our uh, Discord, is we do Trackmania on Tuesdays and Fridays. So uh, if you want to RSVP for that and get good we. with some grandpas, w- the royal we. I- I'm there for moral support sometimes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, patreon.com slash Gamecast. If you don't want to give us a recurring donation, you might want to buy some merchandise, some merchandise. You can head on over to store.linuxgamecast.com, buy yourself a t shirt, buy yourself some uh, coffee cups by yourself, a sticker, something. I don't know. Buy some, some stickers some, for your coffee cup. Buy a Hello put, sticker and put it on your Hello yes. cup. Yeah, just, and, but you got to line it up perfectly so that like, when people peel the off the sticker, they're just like, but why did you put a sticker over the thing of the... Uh, the yeah, just just, con- just confound your friends and enemies. We got some nice uh, die-cast stickers. I mean, the Hello stickers are really nice, and uh, Jordan will attest. These are not, I mean, they're reasonably, all the t-shirts are like right around 20 bucks, but it's the highest quality shit that they have. Yeah, they are the, not the transparent t-shirts. ones. Yeah, the ones you can yeah, see. Yeah, the, 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 stu- the stuff you buy at like Value Village or something that fall yes. apart after two washes. Yeah, no, they're, they're, they're decent, decent shirts. Uh, mine's a little small on me now because I'm so fucking huge. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Quadzilla. We, we, we got, we got, uh, we got a uh, wish list as well. If you head on over to linuxgamecast.com, put your mouse over the support button. I have one. Ven has one. Pedro has one. Jill has one. Um, you can buy some stuff. Uh, if you buy Ven some stuff off the studio wish list, you get your name in lights behind him when it's not obscured by his head. But, you know, it'll, it'll happen. Hey, don't man. There's nothing like that. <laughs> yep. uh, no, no more no, Game no, of Tron, no more Aldias, no more Linux Nero. No, 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 here's, 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 here's the problem. I'm doing this nonsense. This is like going bowling. Like two days from now, I'm like, why the fuck am I sore? With like, oh, right. <laughs> right. Yeah, I, was, I, was try, I was trying to block people's like names bending, on a podcast. Right. Yeah. Hey, uh, I, I, I gotta, I gotta thank uh, Arthur, and he bought me something uh, you this week. He got me a Source of Madness, which is a is Lovecraftian that? card game. It was on Steam. I it wasn't even on my list. I think oh, he just thought fuck I would no, be. No, it's not. I mean, you know <laughs> the people that watch us. <laughs> like, fuck you. Yeah. Here, play this. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't know. He 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 threw that at me. I, I had voiced no interest in it before, but he thought it might be up my alley. So uh, maybe, maybe I'll give that a shot. Uh, yeah, I think that does it. For That's the pretty show decent. Thing. I want to thank everybody. Uh, stick around for your names in the credits. We've been doing this for almost a decade, and. Uh, it's a fun ride, and we're not being too bad. Crazy, matrices. but very, very we're, generous, and we appreciate. We're a it. month. <laughs> we're all, we're a little over a month away from episode five hundred. That's fucked up. Four ninety five. That's wow. Yeah, no, there's yeah. twenty five episodes more until we hit ten years. That's yeah. um, that's pretty fucked yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, speak, speaking of <laughs> fucked up, it's the Steam. Right. No, it's, it's it's not that, but it's still it's still related to Steam. Uh, We're then, circling back. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Be our guest. Print a deck. Put your CAD skills to the test. Um, finals now available. Hello, good news to all the tinkerers, modders, accessory manufacturers. Yeah, everyone who wants to 3D print a Steam Deck. How much would that cost, by the way? One Pedro Mateus. <laughs> See, I went looking, and the, the 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 surface that I had used was the cheapest one that I could find. A uh, hundred and forty five pounds for but the. How much? <laughs> how much is the printer, though? How much is the printer? Did you buy the printer? Two hundred. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the so you, printers so you, they start at around so two hundred. You can, you so can you get can an, print two and make a profit. Yeah, you can get the printer that's going to come with the bullshit cheap PLA that comes with it, and mm-hmm. like two hundred pounds. So, yeah, make it that what so you yeah, will. No, it's one hundred and forty-five, which is like two hundred pounds off of the actual thing. No, <laughs> okay, I would have shopped around. No, you're thinking to yourself, I wouldn't download a deck. Yeah, you would, and this is a great way to do it because this is licensed. Good guy, Valve. Valve being Valve. Creative Common License, so just do with this as ye will. I look forward to deck chucks. So, that, <laughs> you know, that build, whoever comes up with that, that's going to be fucking hilarious. And the one option, if you steal this from me, at least give me like 8% royalty so I can put it back in like show coffers. Um, do you, you remember the original Game Boy? All of us had immediate fun memories when I brought this up. With your Game Boy with its backlit, you had to have that accessory. So what I want to see is a clip-on device that slides over the screen and magnifies it because fucking reasons with the fold-out F- speakers F-S-R, baby. and some RGB lighting to make shit blink. That, that That's what I want. I, I want that attachment. And just just needs to consume your battery. Yeah, and I mean, I mean right now, the, the, the blueprints here are only handy if you want to do some case swap mods. But, you know, it's mm-hmm. also, now that we have the, the physical form factor and dimensions of it, it'd be interesting to see what kind of replacement motherboards or parts people can come up with. Uh, because I th- it really does seem like Valve wants people to, like, go nuts with it. They, they really want to make this their platform. Well, my, my um, immediate thought, everybody's thinking, like extrusion printing i'm like you know what i got access to a cnc machine like a good one like i, I could build a steel dick, a steel <laughs> you dick. Could. Yes. my dick could be shiny <laughs> it could make just full aluminum billet steam deck <laughs> no, and, 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 then, and then like go to the steam deck support forms to be like <laughs> okay pedro uh yeah no the sound went weird for me uh, I guess it still sounds fine as uh, long as I, I, keep I don't talking, know like so. like Jordan's audio flipped out that was uh oh okay so it wasn't just me right no cool. no 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 <laughs> right <laughs> no, you're you're back Jordan well, okay you're, you're, I mean you got a little too excited and, I, I, uh, I guess I, I guess I did you got a little Lovecraftian on us man we were worried about like you know Big Bird showing up and opening the gates of hell but what were you saying. <laughs> Oh, I, was, I was just going to say, like, you should you should, like, get the metal 3D printed Steam Deck and then, like, post on the support forums being like, games don't run on this thing anymore. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and then and then when, when, when people ask what's wrong, you show them a picture of just like this milk block of metal. Yeah, like, I'm trying. I, I tried to press the buttons, but they don't go down and nothing shows up on screen. It's just metal. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. It just, you know, you're going to see like drink attachments, gravity bongs, you know, little things, you know, it's uh, a. Yeah. It should be interesting. Do you think you get like a fold out thing for like, a, oh, oh man, uh, the Nintendo VR thing, man. We could put like oh, a the, tripod the, 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 attachment. The, yeah, the virtual boy. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, the no, no, no. You, you, need, you need to pair that with that USB C HTC headset, right? That they say is not going to work with the with the it, with the deck, but you know, well, you see, this makes works, it. This is going to make it a lot easier to put like the Velcro straps on the back, so I can just ratchet it around and like, ah, there we go. <laughs> So realistic. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm looking for like a built-in toilet kickstand, so you can just be like, oh, sit down. The table. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. no! Speaking of like extrusion, you can reverse that and like put a TV tray in with that uh, depression yes. in it, and like just yeah, click it in place. <laughs> oh man! No, uh, like, well, let your creative juices flow, or your destructive juices, whichever or, happens to be or, your thing. Or your, your, your 3D printer juices, because that's what they run on. Yeah. Juice. See, this is the reason I don't. <laughs> I, I've avoided buying the 3D printer because I, I love this part of living in this timeline, like right now, where it is that reality of like, oh man, I can just print. It's not even that, like, oh, I cracked it or something happened. And like, okay, worst case scenario, I send it out and just get another one printed. Yeah. 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 
Yeah. <laughs> but you know, you're you're gonna need some games for your 3D printed Steam Deck. Uh, <laughs> and so spicylobster.itch.io has an interesting uh, solve to a problem. Uh, you you may have seen ads for game dev- design schools like uh, Full Sail University or a couple of them. They're fucking rackets. They're 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 they're, they're crunch labs. They feed uh, students directly into game studios so that they can be abused and burned out and the cycle continues anew. So these guys, um, these guys are like, well, we, there's got to be a better way. Uh, and so what this is, is a, uh, it's the open game dev school. It's an agreement between like-minded developers and public publishers to create something of a talent incubator. Uh, the description they give kind of reminds me of like game making apprenticeship programs because, you know, you're learning while working on a real product and, you know, potentially getting paid for it if you're on one of those uh, products. Um, and, you know, r- apprenticeship is a really good teaching methodology. It's been in place in humanity for thousands of years, and lots of people have learned stuff through apprenticeships. And I think especially- Yes, Jordan, but in- you're not going to be able to pass a standardized test with your apprenticeship. Ah, yes. <laughs> st- standardized test, the be-all, end-all for success of- Human knowledge, yes. <laughs> yes. Abs- ab- yes abs- let's abs- determine knowledge the exact same way for literally everyone, because everyone but, is the same. Fill in but- the hole. But here, but here, but here's the thing though. Like, I think specifically for game development, it is definitely one of those things where you're not, you can't really learn it in a fundamental, in like in a classroom setting because uh, you you really need to embed yourself in the game design process and constantly iterate, and you don't really get that in a classroom setting. So having having uh, some developers and publishers come together to like create this talent incubator is going to be really good for like the future of gaming. Uh, And right now you can uh, contribute to an existing gaming project, or if you're a company who wants to develop some talent, you can toss your game in with theirs. And I'm I I I don't don't know they they have a couple things on the go. I'm interested to see how it turns out once it starts like evolving and iterating because there 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 isn't a graduation thing. They're not saying. we're going to give you a degree. This is a place where you can go and learn how to make games and refine those skills. Yes. Now here's the thing though. Um, I wouldn't like to rewind everyone's memory back to the night that like, Hey, doesn't fish fight that Rust game have online multiplayer? Yes, of course. So there was a solid 30 minute dedicated block of the show of us updating rust, compiling things, <laughs> getting it up and running. Pedro, how did that work out again? <laughs> it didn't. It was grayed out. <laughs> <laughs> it still says it's a fully playable game on their GitHub. So I want to know if they're going to have any does. focuses, maybe a little bit of focus uh, on communication, I think might be mm-hmm. a good idea in this <laughs> new school. Uh, you know, as Jordan pointed out, there is no graduation day, faculty, volunteer teachers, six active game projects available for students. I like the idea right now. This is hundred percent idea hop in the discord if you got some thoughts on that because i'm going to put a little bit more faith in this once i start seeing something that rhymes with curriculums laid out i do have a little bit of experience with this because you know up until um that x-men movie came out in 20 dark phoenix came out in 2019 and caused like the everything to get shut down uh, a couple of times a year you know usually three or four you know kind of like a quarter i do an introductory linux class like katie and live gim just basic stuff like that and like laying out a curriculum, like what do you expect at what point to get good at is interesting to manage because you have to do that with each individual person. And I, I wonder, like just the thought of like remote education as somebody like trying to teach that scares the shit out of me. Like, like, yeah, I it, don't it, even know it, how to it go definitely, about it. It definitely requires, and I've, I've, I, I, I have some like, uh, I guess anecdotal experience because you know, there's a kid in the house who has to do distance learning because of the, the, the COVID, right? Like, so, um, so yeah, like there, there, there's definitely some like core assumptions in the way that teaching is done that like needs to be adjusted for online space. I think Khan Academy is a very good model, uh, but that's, that's, we, we need to save that for free <laughs> super shows and where we talk about right. the, the, the perils of online education. It's not, it's not a conversation for Linux Gamecast. Uh, I do like the idea. I saw some uh, comments coming by in chat, like unpaid internship. You know, at a certain age, when you're interested in something, like the the ability to work on a moving product or at least to be product adjacent is very, very invaluable. Yes. You know, we're not talking about like, I'm going to quit everything right now and go work on a game for free or something like that. If that's your jam, I get it. But I'm talking about, you know, getting them young and actually getting hands-on experience. Mm -hmm. And you got an option. You might be making some money from this. So we just got to see how it plays out. It sounds like a brilliant yeah. idea. And it is a learning opportunity because yes, not having a defined structure like that also gives you the freedom to say, do that, 
while you're doing something else, you just what? happen to have a couple hours in a day and you get into that and you get with those what, people what, what? and get it going. What, one, other, one other thing that they don't really teach you in formalized education scenarios is actual group project development, mm -hmm. because what you do mm -hmm. in school is not how you actually contribute to a project in the real world. And so ha having, like like Ben said, being adjacent to an in-motion project that you actually have to interface with and produce stuff for will give you that skills. It's going to be a, a, bit, a bit of a baptism by fire, but you kind of, you're, you're either going to get that in the education space, or you're going to get that when you get your first job and you realize, oh, fuck, I got to actually, like interface with people. Like, yeah. It's like having that skill set. And some people do not survive first contact with that. We call them professors. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I got friends like that, man, but I mean, it works for them and you know, it is very, very invaluable. The trial by fire is a perfect way of explaining that. And you know, this is like traditionally something that we, if you want to dial it back, this was something that you would pay for the opportunity to do. It was like, yes, yeah. let me pay you money to come work for you for free. So if we, that, that's, that's, that's pretty much what full sale is, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm just talking about the apprenticeship programs throughout recorded history. Yeah. But you you still, you still it's get paid in higher education in a nutshell as well. It's like, I'm going to pay you money so you can uh, teach me how to do things. Uh. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I'm going back to like middle ages, man. It's like, right, families, uh, uh, like uh, I'm going to pay this, whoever, right, right, master right. of whatever, I mean, all right, mm -hmm. now you could live with this person for seven years and learn the trade. I mean, I, well, I mean, uh, mod modern apprenticeships, you do actually get paid for them. So some of them, for, some, like, yeah. yes, <laughs> the good, the, the ones you should be apprenticing for, the, if, you're, if, you're, <laughs> if, you're, if you're doing a lot of hard work and not getting paid for it, you might be a slave. Well, I mean, um, it all kind of boils down and depends. I mean, I will say getting exploited. I was on a very early pilot program in secondary school as a youth apprenticeship program. And I worked and I got paid, but I got, they paid me minimum wage and I was managing a team. Oh boy. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's, that's always fun. <laughs> so you make it uh, that way. You will. Ozone. Let's talk about dongles. Zon? Zon? Dong is it, dongles. How do you pronounce the X and do you, do we call it X one or just zone? I want to call it zone. 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 <laughs> oh man. We zone. need to, there needs to be a Cal version of it so we can have Cal zone. <laughs> zone. <laughs> do a little Hebrew style. What is it? You never heard about it, man. This is that driver you need. If you are scared of the blue teeth and the Wi-Fi is with the brain worms and causing your pinky toes to fall off. But if you like to live that corded life, a uh, couple of new things in this driver for Linux, uh, compatibility, a couple of new vendors. I didn't know turtle beach was still around. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Creators of sound cards from way back in the day. A couple of new things in this latest version. Um, fully featured drivers for the wireless dongle. That's kind of nice to have. Guide button for LED mode control, USB remote wake up apps, all this other stuff. Now, I was reading through this, and you know, this is the kernel level driver for the Xbox One in the Xbox Series XJS Yolo Swag. Um, I spent $200 on a controller. The well, only Scott thing, did. Yeah, well, hi, Scott. Well, Scott's got the old one. He doesn't have the more in it. He might. Well, he might. I don't, I don't want to talk any smack. <laughs> the only thing, my biggest takeaway from this, it's got DKMS for your kernel. So, I mean, build once and it'll do its thing. Is, uh, yeah, you, I don't want to live that um, wired life. If it's this much work, I'm just like, pair? Done? Okay. <laughs> well... So, so, so here, here's the thing there, 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 there is, if you want to use uh, Bluetooth, you still got to use uh, XPad Neo. This is just for the official wireless. Okay. You say that and you're hundred percent right. But that, that caused me the, the expando. Uh, I, I went and looked at the instructions for that and they're like, yeah, yeah. Sync it. You're done. <laughs> okay. I, <laughs> I, uh, well, I, well I, I mean, like it, it's, it's the same thing with it's, it's a little bit of the same thing with the DualShock 4, right? Like we have the kernel level driver now before it was just working fine over Bluetooth with the and Sony provided GSF. the actual kernel level driver for the dual sense. Mm. Okay. Thanks, Sony. Yep. <laughs> um, I see a uh, tech link. You posted that uh, they do have the, I don't know for the headset, but they got the microphone and audio stuff working with. Yeah, the they have the, the, this one supports uh, the headset. I don't know yep. if X it, it all, does, but this uh, it also supports the share does. button. If you if you want to post your games to Facebook or mm. Meta or Metaverse, yep. I don't I don't know. Are we good with it? I think. 
I, I, think, I, I think so. I, I, I'm trying to, trying to figure out how to transition to Naikari? Nave? I uh, don't know. know. So something about uh, space? Space X? But, no. Give, give, uh, give, me, give me some is... space, Pedro. <laughs> this is Bitch, a Bitch, give me an airlock. Of... I'll hook you up. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds nice right now. Just getting sucked yeah, out the, of the void This of is a fork of Nav, or Nave, or however you want to say uh, that name. Uh, it is basically the developers wanted to do some specific things, some specific changes to the interface, some specific changes to the mechanics of the game. Uh, and... Well, the Nave developers are like, we don't really want to do that, but hey, it's open source, so they forked it and they implemented those changes uh, themselves, and they provided Nothing an app like image, a so. wall of text describing interface changes without a fucking picture. Yep. Um, uh, they they use American <laughs> spellings instead of British ones. Oh, we have nothing <laughs> against extra U's, but go fuck yourself, England. <laughs> yeah, the um, it, they have the very extensive list, and I read through most of it admittedly by the end i was just reading a bit diagonally it's like okay what anything interesting no oh app image what, I'm, I'm gonna download what, that what, what's give it a bolt? try <laughs> yeah uh what downloaded the app image it works very nice uh love the background music the background music was really nice but i also went back and did control f and searched for music search for background search for soundtrack search for just sounds and uh, zero results so i'm guessing that was inherited from nave nav net mm. yeah, however you say what, that what, <laughs> one one interesting thing about this is it. Like Pedro mentioned, it's a fork, but it's a friendly fork, actually. Um, it seems yeah. to be there's some there's some back and forth with the features now that now that they saw it implemented in uh, Nakari, they're like or Nakari, they're like, oh yeah, now now that we see it, let's let's go bring this back. <laughs> yes. so, it, it's so you know what it's it's good to see like actual healthy relationships between forked projects. So like, love yeah, we we want to do a different thing. Cool, the- have fun. It's that relationship that you described. Like, that's a stupid idea. That's a horror. Oh, wait, they, did, they already did all the work. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? We'll consider bringing that into our project. <laughs> yeah. The, the, Although the, the mind method. test people could learn a couple of things, but hey. <laughs> Shut up. Give them their knives back. Put them back in the circle. Let them go. <laughs> they're, 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 they're square knives because they're made out of voxels. So yeah, that's, just- it, it's a gift that keeps on giving, man. They're bruised up, but I mean, no one's dead. <laughs> Not even going to lose an eye. <laughs> so uh wine has got some new hotness out this week um yes. up to and including version 7.2 uh which uh does have a uh new mono engine version so if you are using something that requires mono you now have version 7.1.1 which almost brings it up to parity with the current dot net uh on windows but not really Very nice. uh, th- uh the um there's some beginnings of a WMA decoder, which is very nice, but we're going to need some WMV to go along with that. That That's still one of the things that's very much missing. The uh, Windows Media platform is very, very lacking in Wine right now, but I'm glad that they're working on it. Yeah, <laughs> and, right, right, uh, right now the, the, the workaround involves downloading a bunch of code that uh, they don't have permission to use kind of sort of so literally downloading You're, windows media player effectively <laughs> both of you were burying the lead in 7.2 because I would oh like, yes of course i would like to report the half-life <laughs> cd version <laughs> menu refuses to work after a while <laughs> yeah you gotta you gotta let it sit, you gotta sit there for an hour you, so. you gotta wait this shit out not only do you have to have half-life at the cd version a cd rom possibly you gotta have Which patience I have. <laughs> So this is a bug that has been fixed <laughs> in 7.2, and I, I I just want to thank the brave souls out there that this, this was somebody had this issue. <laughs> I want to believe somebody's out there just looking for obscure bullshit and like let's just put this game in and let it run for a yeah. minute and see if it's something. I'm I'm gonna stare at the menu screen for 30 minutes to see if and it you, stops working. Right, and when I say something like <laughs> it, oh, you're being you're making a funny joke. Not really, because this stuff is important. Because this undercover, you know, this will reveal issues with other things down the line. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is like the wine project in a nutshell, just working all the stuff back. So mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, because it, it it's it's all about accuracy for the wine project. That's why they're not using uh, DXVK. That's why they're not using a bunch of the other enhancements that Proton is using. Is because wine's main concern is we need to be able to run Windows code exactly the way Windows runs it. <laughs> Doing and a better job at running legacy Windows products than Microsoft. 
Yeah, yep. fair. No. fair. <laughs> not, not, not so great. At, not so great at the web design, though. But uh, you know, can't be good at everything. That's because you need and to upgrade. There's theming IE7. improvement. <laughs> well, yeah. So now, now XP Silver looks good. Is is that what the did that XP what the has a Silver thing? It's XP the did have a more of theme. yes, ah. yeah. Okay, uh, and uh, it's more about the actual integration with your theme that you have set on your distro, no. which it didn't have which, before. Which, but yes, they have been working very hard to. Okay, do hang on. Which, no. if, if your Linux does not look like XP Silver, you're doing it wrong. I'm I'm trying to draw from very very old memories. Okay, XP was the big green start button, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. The, 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 the Tonka the, the, the sausage one. Yeah. Didn't it have an option to and go like only the instead of blue? It was silver. <laughs> Didn't it have an option to go to like Windows 2000 mode, like yeah, adult yeah, mode? Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Fine, fine, fine. Yeah. So that's neat. That's wonderful. And uh, is that it? Yeah. Ho- ho- hopefully, hopefully in about five minutes, we'll, we'll see the Proton GE release for that. And uh, we'll <laughs> miss it this week. Coming up next, darkness imprisoning me, but I can still see in <laughs> what four does by it three. Do? Why is it here? Absolute horror. <laughs> Seriously. What the fuck? Is, what's the point? Welcome back to the cult, I mean, Sharequisition. This week, uh, we're taking a look at Dark Minute. Heroes Adventure, you might be asking yourself, what is this cult, I mean, Sharequisition? And that is where we take a game that runs on Linux. Uh, we run it on a bunch of different distributions with, uh, these days, remarkably similar hardware. There used to be bigger hardware Delta in the past. Maybe when Intel comes out with the GPU, it'll uh, it'll uh, re, uh, re-diversify. You know, you, but until you, then... You do say this. You say this like <laughs> we're not all going to end up with, like... Intel GPUs. Different versions of like Intel yeah, right. GPUs. Yeah. <laughs> Shush. Shut you. How how dare you speak truth in this most hallowed of segments? Yeah, but uh we 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 run it on our computers and we give you a final score uh based on our highly scientific lawn chair metric. Uh, from one to four. Uh, so yeah, uh, Dark Minute Cures Adventure. It's by Koval Games, done on the Unity Engine. You can pick it up for about ten bucks. What is it? Can you help Kira find the answers to her questions? Take on mysterious technology and a thrilling platformer. Meet hundreds of prepared challenges. Learn a great secret and discover the terrible secrets of the past and humanity. Uh, we got to thank Koval Games for sending us some keys and also using secrets so much in their secret text of secrets pedro what's your secret score what's the what's the secret uh, <laughs> uh, see, secret distribution? No, no, no. We'll, we'll, we'll get to the score in a moment yes over here on uh, the ryzen 7 3700x with the gtx 1080 running in kde neon uh it launched out of the box it holds 144 ferps at 2560 by 1440 and that's about where the positives stop. Uh, the input method is keyboard only. And your character person has very, very sticky movement. Very sticky. Not the good kind of sticky either. It, it, yeah. Some of the checkpoints straight up don't work. They light up, but they don't actually spawn you back when you die. So that's, yeah. The camera zooms in at random points, which I think is a delay from the dying animation, not actually zooming in when you die, but doing it like two or three seconds later when you've already respawned, which is very disconcerting. And the text and UI elements don't exactly line up. You can see the um, the time to dark is actually uh, on video is actually in the right place there. Oh yeah, and that platform it <laughs> goes on for a little longer than it should. Dun, 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 That's dun, level dun, two. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> but <laughs> the. Um, the power cells that you see on the top right next to the timer, that's supposed to be on the very top right next to the three little pips that indicate the power cells. That's not in the right place. But hey, the um, the fun, is it fun? No, no, it's it's not fun. Uh, around level seven, my opinion was firmly cemented that this game is a rage platformer. It's... It's what it looks like. It's just a better looking one than most of the ones that are really low effort and they are all over the Steam store. But yeah, the stickiness of the main character is so prone. Um, it, it, it's no, it, it's frustrating. It's actually genuinely frustrating because you did your character just sticks to walls. And if you're too close to a wall, then you can't jump, which is bad in a platformer. And the, there's far more technical cockups. Uh, the uh, let's say the um, there's no controller support. There's no um, 
<laughs> if you trip the death flag multiple times, you get respawned just as many times. So you keep respawning uh, two or three times after you've already respawned. There's that delay uh, in the zoom from the death cam. The checkpoints that don't really work. Uh, the only redeeming quality is that it looks very charming and has very nice background music, which I'm pretty sure I've heard somewhere. But that those niceties don't really, you know, give it enough for a second chair, so it gets one. Yeah, so on Fedora 35, 64 of it with the R9 3900X GTX 1080 Ti, it launches out of the box. Uh, but, you know, you try to wiggle your controller and uh, there's no controller input in the menu. And um, so you're like, ah, I got a platform with a uh, keyboard and mouse, which I normally don't like under the best of circumstances. But, oh, God, the keyboard controls here are awful um it also did not like my dual shock in wired mode because every time i jumped it opened up a menu uh so um it also for what for whatever reason my the, uh bluetooth on the dual shock wasn't having it but uh, switch pro controller to the rescue that worked uh but until until there was a bluetooth interruption and then the controllers don't reconnect uh due to steam input <laughs> so, uh, fun wise, 40 minutes in, I still don't know what the point of the darkness mechanic is. You know, you have a minute to navigate the levels and then after that, your lights go out and it, yeah, it makes the navigation like slightly harder, but really, really it, there's like shit on the screen. Like it looks like the game wants to be in four by three, but they couldn't figure out how to do that. So these big metal panels just in the middle of the screen until the lights go out just to make things even more fucking confusing. Um, and I, I don't know. Uh, the, d the darkness thing only seems to affect your score. And I guess for speed running, that's nice. But for a casual playthrough, there isn't really much like mechanical enforcement to this whole minute thing. The difficulty curve does ramp up and, you know, you will need to get better at the platforming to move forward. Um, like Pedro says, it gets a little bit in the rage platformer territory like that, especially when you're on a clock. <laughs> um, but here's the thing, though. The platforming, it's serviceable at best. We have so many platforms now, platformers out now that you need to have something to distinguish your game from the myriad others that exist. And in this game, it was the time limit thing, but time limit thing has no real tangible effect. You're you're looking at it right now. Like you can still navigate the game, no problem. And yeah, it's not super challenging. It's just lucky. And yeah, after a while, the stu the zoom cam fucks up if you've died enough. And yeah, it's it's great because you'll be w walking around and then zoom in real close, and then it'll zoom out randomly, and then it'll zoom back in, and then you die. Yeah, I'm not having fun with this. I'm gonna give it one chair. Oh no. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> All right, so let's give it the real test on the um, Linux distribution that you can't possibly game on, on the CPU that you can't possibly game on. What do I have? I got Debian you need, 11. You need a custom kernel. Yes, a custom kernel, mm -hmm. by the way. <laughs> um, <laughs> so you're a cheater. Got yeah, it. 100%, man. I'm hacking like 70 easy anti-cheats over here, man. Let me reset my clock when I'm thinking about it. Okay, but for reals, though. Uh, yeah, Threadripper 1920X, 32 gigs of RAM, NVMe drive, NVIDIA 2060. Probably enough to handle this little guy. Now, First thing, um, keyboard only. Gamepad mapped to keyboard. Uh, that, that's not what I like to see when I first open a game. Uh, more on that at 11. But uh, video didn't play on first launch. Like when you first launch, you get like a black screen with some audio. So I went to Proton later on. I'm like, oh, I was supposed to be seeing something there. And then I ran into the tap jump twice with a quickness. And just behold, you get like a delayed double jump. But again, I'll get into these in a second. No cloud saves. No cloud saves. And uh, if you're wondering if your Proton progress uh, would be compatible with your Linux pro progress, nay, it's not. Now, it does have an option for full screen 2160p and windowed 2160p. That is not resizable. So those are your options for your screen. And um, Pedro, I'm jealous of your left and right bars on the side of your screen. They're like, why are these fucking things there? <laughs> you're just looking at me like, Whoa, what? what's the deal? I'm not joking. There's mine. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I had the same thing. It's, yeah, like 20% <laughs> of my damn screen covered up by that while I'm playing the entire time. But speaking of fun, um, my first interaction with the Dark Minute uh, was that keyboard mouse map to controller nonsense pop up. And uh, that tells me you're about to experience one or two things, um, a byproduct of laziness or technical incompetence. And sometimes you might run into both. You just might. My second ah moment was it's just discovering the lack of like backtracking in the second level because it is very easy to not grab the energy cell at the top and work your way down to the bottom and you're just fucked you got to restart the level so 
not a good first impression. So I'm going to say with that, then I started getting killed to death because my jumps were bad. Initially, I blamed that on me because old, but then I started hammering on the problem like any good person is going to do literally hammering on this problem because pressing jump on the gamepad on my X, X own zeal one S that I get over here. If you do it like in succession, succession, is that it? Yeah. Success, mm. Succession. Succession. Yep. Yes. That's the word. Uh, real quick. You get that one jump like you normally expect, but then like almost a full second later, you get a second jump. I'm like, ah, that is probably to down, probably an issue with the, you know, keyboard being mapped to the controller. So I naturally reach over and I start hammering on the space bar. Does the same thing. Fine. I'll switch it over to Pro Proton. Same problem. So that's just something you got to live with. And uh, that, that's kind of an issue in a platformer for me. Now, back to the fun. I did about 30 minutes into this. And during that nonsense, and after a few insta kills, I just called it quits, man. You know, having large chunks of my screen again, <laughs> this is my screen cut off on the left and right with the dodgy jumping. That's a nope parfait. It's just like so much shit doesn't make sense here. I, I I get the feels that this is reverse programmer art. You know, sometimes you know, we've had people on the show and they're like, yeah, man, it's it's my game. I like it. it it's full of programmer art. I'm like, that's acceptable, you know, a reverse programmer art. Because I, I look at this and I mean, it looks good and sounds all right, but technically it's kind of 100% a shit show. I mean, you could power your way through it, but anything that might be deemed as a challenge in this game, I don't think was necessarily intentional. So that needs to be tweaked up before I could say you could have any fun with this whatsoever. And I really wanted to like this. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago and uh, it, it's just not there. And to speak to Pedro and Jordan's point, yeah, I have no idea what the dark thing does. None. I never encountered. Yeah. I read in the forums that like maybe later on you encounter monsters. I don't know. The only monster I really encountered was, oh, look, the bats insta kill. Like yeah, everything the else. bats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the 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 bats and the uh oh i i need i barely came in proximity to a spike i did mm -hmm. yes and there's some <laughs> collision detection issues with the jumping with like blocks that are going vertical and horizontal that will, i mean oh uh, or, or the elevator platforms yes oh, yeah, yeah i mean or just, that one that you saw earlier with <laughs> character floating yeah. in midair <laughs> very 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 uh serious issues that need to be addressed in something when the core mechanic is platforming yeah, you might you might want to get that in shape for a Steam Deck release. You yeah, got a little under a month. You gotta to, say uh, no with that. And also, what's with the power level and the card thing, like in the middle of the damn screen, up at the top, right? Like, right, yeah. Like, like, it, I, again, it seems like they wanted to do four by three, but they just couldn't quite figure it out. They, yeah. And why did the bars <laughs> move? Like Jordan and I were like, we really denied a lot of our screen. Pedro, maybe not so much. I think it's uh, dependent on the resolution. It's not scaling properly. But this is a Unity game, and Unity hasn't really had this yeah. problem. Like, look at the text, like, uh, time in darkness. Mm -hmm. and that's in the middle of the screen while the actual time is at the very top. Yeah. It, yeah. That. <laughs> it's, it, it's, it, the, 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 there's not much in the way of uh, consistency in the boy here. Uh, not so much. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the, the thing that got me the most was uh, Jordan got his achievements. He ah, had uh, yes. unlocked achievements. Both myself and Ven do not. Until, here, until, dun-dun-dun. <laughs> so, I, I I periodically creep on these guys' achievements playing in the game. Like, okay, did I get about as far as Pedro? Did I get as, about mm -hmm. as far as Ven? Just to, just, just to know where, 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 where I am in terms of the gameplay. Uh, so, Pedro had achievements as of, like four o'clock in the afternoon today and they disappeared. So I don't, I don't know what the fuck is happening. <laughs> what about your achievements? I, I have, I have a bunch of them. So I don't know. Yeah, Jordan's don't know. achievements are still showing. I never saw any of my achievements. Uh, when I saw Jordan wasn't locking his, I thought, Oh, maybe this is a steam beta thing. So I dropped out of the beta, played the game, got to the same point. It's like, no, no, that no, uh, still no achievements. It, it, er <laughs> it erased all your progress. <laughs> Pedro, your internet penis. What, what are you going to do? <laughs> oh, uh, man. Well, I hope it uh, doesn't cry when I uninstall it. But yeah, yeah. there's that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I was going to make some off-color joke about Dark Minute, but coming up next, uh, we, we hear back from the one Google Stadia fan. Ooh, found one. What, 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 what do they say? 
that was very hot tea that I just put in my mouth. Uh, if there are words that, say, came out of my mouth uh, during the show that you thought were particularly deserving of some hatred, by all means, go to LinuxGameCast.com, uh, hit the contact button on the nav bar at the top, and uh, fill out the form. There are some Hold caveats on a minute, you might want to read. shopping for cowbells. <laughs> like, I'm not even fucking around. I, I'm, like, looking at cowbells. Right you can, uh, uh, yeah, did, did, if you, you find, find a Bluetooth-enabled Bluetooth cowbell, you, know you need to tell us you, about it. You know what? <laughs> I set my expectations accordingly. I searched for USB cowbell. Disappoint. <laughs> <sighs> Shame. Shame. Maybe there isn't a USB one, but there's most definitely got to be a Bluetooth one now. But yeah, the form is fairly self-explanatory. The caveats at the top also help explain if for some reason you're clicking that button and your thing is not coming through. Yeah, probably missed one of them. So yeah, LGC Weekly is the show that you want to send your hate mail to. Or you can send uh, Ven and Jill some feedback for the Wednesday show. You can ask Jordan for relationship advice or try literally any of the other categories, including the other categories. Smash those <laughs> button. Bam. So last week, we dared talk about, we, we broke the news. No one expected this. This came out of nowhere. Shock among shock, horror among horrors to the gaming industry as a whole that Google Stadia was effectively going away as we know it. And Google's rebranding it as a white label service and like AT&T and other companies can like rent some Stadia to deploy whatever they want. Someone took issue with that. <laughs> they did. They did. Henrique. Uh, you want to take this one, Jordan? <laughs> I was, I was going to ask who's going to do it. I'll, I'll, I'll do it. First, uh, Henrique says, I think this news is nonsense. Google released a few months ago a Stadia apps for LG and Samsung TVs. I think this kind of news is the hate to feed the, the console gaming. war. Yes. Uh, Google has the Play Store and YouTube, each with billions of users, in which it signaled that it will integrate Stadia with it. Selling games in the future. Cloud gaming is just the beginning, and the guys are living in an anxiety crisis. Google responded on Twitter to these speculations. If you hear one thing, hear this. The Stadia team is working really hard on a great f future for Stadia and cloud gaming. Which, you know, I don't, to me seems like, yeah, we're, we're going to go sell our tech to Peloton uh -huh. so they can make better bikes. Uh, th there's a couple of ways to read that. Uh, yeah. I mean, we're talking like before or after they closed down their gaming studio. I mean, they're, 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 they're sending signals, man. <laughs> like the big red cones at the airport of like, yo, this is what we're doing. And that's what they said. You know, the stadia team, what is left of them, you know, since the guy in charge of it left, um, they were working really hard on trying to get some ROI on that investment. But, what do we have here, Pedro? Do we have, do we have somebody that is just a genuine fan of Stadia? Because I know I've said multiple times. I mean, like it or not, the future of gaming, game deployment, will be some form of streaming. And is this somebody that's just really bought into Stadia? It makes sense. Is yes. this somebody with hundreds <laughs> of dollars of games and Stadia in the position that we all looked at and went, uh, uh, you know, Stadia goes away, your games go away. <laughs> it, it, yeah. Uh, probably the, this is probably like the, uh, sunk cost fallacy slash, uh, Stockholm syndrome kicking in because yeah, they probably invested a lot of money and now clearly the platform is not doing terribly well and they will refuse to admit it until Google does what Google does and pulls the plug on the thing, which I guess Enrique here is going to learn the hard way why you don't do that with Google. Is that Henrique in Portuguese? <laughs> it, yes. <laughs> it is a <laughs> heavily yeah. Portuguese de pronunciation. Enrique. I don't know. I mean, I definitely... That, 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 that's, that's what my grandparents call my dad. Enrique? Enrique, yeah. Is his name Enrique or they just do it to fuck with him? I don't fucking know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't ask that shit. Dad's name's like John. <laughs> And my mother's maiden name is. Oh man, uh, you know, here here's the thing. I mean, it, this is something that you can go to the GeForce Now subreddit and look at people like doing victory laps if they're able to pay Nvidia to rent a thirty ninety for their service to play their games on streaming, and how active that is. Versus, yes, there's also technically 
a subreddit for Stadia. I think somebody posted there a couple of times once. <laughs> you want to see delusion greater than the AMD subreddit? <laughs> AMD. I mean, listen, this is, you're going to deal with this anytime you run into like fans of something, you know, being fans of Linux. And listen, I've been shouted down multiple times of like, dare I point out the realities of Linux sometimes and the negative aspects of things. Oh, this is just reality. I mean, it's outside of our friend Enrique. Is there anyone, as I said last week, not going, can't really believe it's still a thing. Cause this Linux is- Nuru was like that for a while. I remember him. He says, no, I like Sadie. I like Sadie, but I think I fe- even, uh, <laughs> I think even he is like, going to, eh, mm, no, but like <laughs> speaking, speaking of Stockholm syndrome though, he spent many years without a solid internet connection and going back to yeah. one and just being like, Oh my God, look what I can do with like stable internet. I thought it's it was be because right? like his brother's wife worked at, on the team or something. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. His brother, I, sister's former roommate's hairdresser. <laughs> Stadia was a cool idea. I mean, listen, if, if Google was able to deliver in like six to 12 months what they showed off in that initial announcement, like, I'm not going to say none of that shit ever made it to Stadia, but about 80% of it just never yeah, came. Most of, most of the actual interesting stuff never Yeah, like being up. able to join your friends in the middle of a game and picking up and all yeah, that. Yeah, just app. export a URL and you'll get to sent to the, that exact same point in time. So yeah. you, you can ask someone to like beat that part for you or whatever. It's, and well, it's that, not, it maybe, maybe like you can do that with Peloton. <laughs> you, can, you, can, you can drop in halfway through a bike ride and just do half of it. But you got to think about it. I mean, this is Google. Google wrote some <laughs> checks, you know. They did. And, yeah. It still didn't get any adoption with it. And a lot of it is from people like us. We are part of the problems because fuck Google products. I'm not buying anything that like well, Google puts out hardware wise. I've learned my lesson. Google, you've taught me on if, multiple occasions that that's a bad idea. And if you don't have a good internet connection or if you don't have like reliable internet connection, mm-hmm. then the service is kind of not worth anything to you. And even that, it boils so down how far boom, away. Boom. I mean, we deal with latency <laughs> issues with audio and you right, imagine like, yeah, right everything else. Yeah. So. I, I look forward to how the problem gets solved, and it's unfortunate that Google Stadia wasn't the solution. So uh, it's yeah. going to be Amazon Luna for sure. <laughs> Did, okay, fair question. Is there MMO still a thing? Did they just t- uh, new New World? Oh, I think the still MMO still a thing. It's still burning video cards, from what I hear. Uh, well, last time I heard oh, about you, it, you can go buy a new one from uh, yes, Best, Best, Best Buy, right? one ninety nine. <laughs> They got a cover charge. It's a bit higher than ours. <laughs> Patreon.com forward slash Linux game guest. All right. Beautiful people on that. Um, bombshell. Let's go ahead and bring this up. You can always get a hold to us anytime you want. We speak in a discords. We are in our discord 24 seven. That is our Slack chat. And uh, that's where our communications, even if you just want to be a fly on the wall and watch that, I mean, that's where it happens. Like the only time lurk. Yeah. Our group (laughs) chat lights up, but even between the three of us, it's like when something is tragically fucking wrong and nobody responded to my fucking at reply on discord. I'm like, all right, I'll make your computer make noise. And uh, (laughs) all my Google devices. Yeah. Well, you know what? In, In my defense, if I, Tune into your live stream and I see a problem, and then I like write something in Twitch chat. I'm like, all right, nuke option. I'll make the stream make yeah. noise. <laughs> Bring, uh-huh. fair, fair, fair. <laughs> That's where we are doing our things. You can always pop in our Discord if you're a Twitch sub or a patron. Uh, IRC is always open, free, and it's linked with our live channel on Discord. So don't think of it as IRC a Libra chat. That is it. It's on our live page at LinuxGameCast.com. Get in touch with me at Vin Stone on Twitter. I'm there. You can at reply. You can click on hearts and all the other fun stuff. And I'll probably write you back if you say something interesting. And of course, just uh, at Vin on our federated timeline because Mastodon. Have you heard of Matrix? No, Mastodon. Mast.linuxgamecast.com. I'm Jordan Swung. You can't make my computer make noise, but I definitely make your computer make noise. You unplug your headphones. Uh, you can follow me for more noise at The Burning Fool on Twitter or twitch.tv slash Burning Fool. And I am Pedro Mateo, still feeling strangely proud that I uh, hopefully am still seared onto someone's TV after their continuous playing of LGC playlist on YouTube froze on my face. So then I was forever etched onto that particular screen, but that's what, just what, me what, and what, my what big ego. Mask of the Red Pedro? <laughs> 
you can absolutely go and uh, attempt to tame this particular ego on Twitter at an accounted for that's F O U R. Uh, yeah, that hit me up on there. That's that's a good place to do it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, one thing we learned tonight is where oh where be our Bluetooth cowbells. <laughs> it's, it's like an electric drum kit, except it's only the one cowbell. pad. Like, yes. yeah. I don't, Your kid has Bluetooth I don't even need a transducer. <laughs> Just give me a MIDI controller. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, I, it, it, it's, the, it's the electric shame bell. <laughs> Show title. <laughs> That's for some show. credits. Bye-bye. Scorched Earth, man. Did anyone play that game? I didn't. No. Uh Gotta thank our people in the Star Wars credits, the executive producers, the Patreons, making this all possible with a couple little fuckers at the end of it. We thank our executive, pro- or our advisors, <laughs> Omegas and Arthurin, our ad, our, yeah, our uh, executive Tune producers. Next week for Alias, a new level, Barbara executive Rex, advisors. Executive <laughs> Scott Michaud, Mr. Fox Dog, Tom McCass, Mike G, Mike T, Drummer, Kohaku, and George. And Lodicky fans, Darkwing, and Abstraction. And of course, we get our sea monsters like Jackie, Renault, L, Ryder X, Mark, and a Truggy Vert, and Uta, Justin, Frostclaw, and Streiter. And Death Notes, Nova, Basil, Chad, Romeo, Marson, System T, Craig, Renee, Leonardo, DeCresney, Kim, Smashley, Chris, Stephen, Jill, Benjamin, Doom, 2. Watt, Stephen B, Dirty Dean, Back, Gamatron, Dodger, Xanthus Gaming, Rouge, Turnover, like Cheesy Bacon, Yannick, Martin, and Steve, of course, Kyle Linux, or Eagle, 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 Phil, 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 in the track mania alerted man i enjoy watching phil and the camera did too last week look, look at these fuckers <laughs> i don't know what's wrong with the uh track mania camera but fuck all it loves some phil man i go into spectator mode you're getting some phil <laughs> you're getting your fill of phil <laughs> dude it, it, we, we had a lot of filler on friday is all i'm saying I'll, I'll, I'll filler no killer that if i everyone we'll see you next week bye bye oh what, what was that you no <laughs> Someone upstairs. Five dudes.